Seven cliches in photography coming up. Hi, it's Peter here. We all photograph cliches, but should we avoid them? After discussing the seven cliches of photography, I will tackle on that question. The first one is sunset. We have all done it and we will do it in the future. And nothing wrong with that, because we want to share a great moment that we have. We saw a very beautiful sunset and we want to share it and we'll take a photograph of it. Making those images of cliches is, is totally fine. But of course you have to remember that the cliches might not resonate with others. If a photograph of a average sunset is shared, people might not resonate. It's just like, all right, a sunset. But it's an important photograph for you. So I'm not saying that you should not take the photograph, but always remember that it might not resonate with others and my others might not think it as a good photograph because they went there and they did not feel it. And then reflections. Reflections are a very common way of making images and it's a good way. It, it uh, looks in most cases good and there are lots and lots of uh, opportunities to make images of reflections. There are windows in the cities, there are mirrors in the cities and then you know in the uh, nature there are puddles and ponds and even sea when it's really calm. You can make really nice looking images. The problem with that is that it has been used so many times that it has become a cliche and that's why it might not be such a interesting image for others. But yet again if you feel like photographing it by all means do it. It's your image and I will talk about that stuff a bit later too why you should maybe not avoid cliches or how to cope with those. The third one is about composition. The rule of third is one of the most used way of making the composition. The reason is that the image looks pretty good. But the problem with this is because it's so widely used, most images that are or, or the composition is made with the rule of thirds are pretty boring. Try to rethink that and see if you could break that way of making the composition to make the image a bit more interesting. And then there is one that is something that you should avoid and that is selective color. That's the biggest and the most boring cliche. And what it means is that you have a black and white image with just one color. Yeah, it was fun in the early days of digital photography where you could easily do it. But uh, you know, it's just <laughs> looks not, oh, it doesn't look very good in most cases. I don't recall many images that has been interesting when they've used selective color. It was, like I said, it was an interesting thing to do when digital photography and image editing was a new thing. It was something that wasn't done that much in the past. And then another cliche that is come through digital photography is bokeh, which is something that was not discussed or talked about at all when we used film. Bokeh was not a thing. And if we look at the old classical photographs, they're not good because they have a nice bokeh. They're good because they have very well made composition. The situation is perfect. The moment is perfect and everything is perfect. But uh, having this way of doing bokeh is, is kind of a new thing. And, and unfortunately something that if you have a really shallow depth of field, a nice bokeh, it's more professional looking image. Uh, well, it's not. I would say that it is more like an amateurish look image if you play, if you use the bokeh just because of the bokeh. Sometimes, of course, shallow depth of field and how bokeh looks in the image might be interesting if you want to hide something. There are some distracting things that you want, don't, you don't want to interfere with the viewer's mind. You just want the subject to be recognized and that's it and you separate it from the background. Yes, shallow depth of field is one way of doing it. But it's not something that you should be doing all the time. And you know, it's, it's a bit cheesy to be honest if that's the thing. And then we have silhouettes, which is sometimes a very good way. You can hide the identity of a person to make a silhouette, just to make the composition better, having a, some something in the front in the front of the image and not just the the um, subject you're photographing. It might be more interesting if there is a silhouette. But yet again, this is so commonly used that it has become a cliche. And then before we start talking about should you avoid these cliches and and how to how to evolve and maybe make the cliches work for you. The last one, and that's the tourist shots, which I think is not a cliche in a way, because those can act as a good memory. So do not avoid this cliche. If you're traveling, 
make those interesting tourist shots for you because what's the biggest problem is that many photographers underestimate the power of a memory because when you take those tourist shots in an interesting place or a historical sites where you visited and, and you know looked around and, and learned new things make those images because they are good memories for you you can go back to the trip you can go back to the experience with those images and of course if you can make them good photographs also that's good but don't waste your time you know photographing or, or thinking too much about photographs when you're in a, in a historical sites because it has been photographed so many times most likely you won't get any special thing or anything special out of that except that it's your unique image as a memory and like i said never never underestimate the power of memory through photographs those are really valuable things and then to the question should we avoid making cliche photographs and it, it is a tough question because it all depends what are your goals in photography? As I said, you go to a tourist shot, take, a, take that cliche and it acts as a memory and it acts as a part of your photographic journey in a way that if, if that is why you photograph to record memories, it's totally fine because there is no wrong way of making photographs. It is only your way. It is so sad sometimes to realize that how many people photograph for someone else. That is the, probably the saddest thing you can do in photography. You always should try to aim so that you photograph for yourself. It doesn't mean that you will become a great photographer. It means that you are okay and do not feel shamed about your tourist shots because you shouldn't. Like I said, great memories. But of course, if you want to evolve as a photographer, it also requires that you start photographing for yourself and think yourself and make those images that you feel like are the ones that you want to make and if those are the cliches totally fine nothing wrong with that but of course if you want to avoid the cliches and go to the next level if you want if you feel like it then trying to make the cliche images your own in some ways and some things are quite easy just wait for someone to walk into the photograph and yeah, the paradox here is that that is also a bit of a cliche. You have someone walks in there, but take that also to a next level. Wait and be patient and think what could be a good thing in that photograph right now. If it's a colorful scene, maybe someone wearing black and white or the vice versa could be a good thing or complementary colors or the same color or something like that. Or is it a car? Is it a motorcycle? Is it people walking or what could be? The thing because in my experience if you start thinking and wanting things you start seeing them and you will get some better images it's just what i've sometimes referred as a photographer's luck but it's not pure luck it's something that if you start thinking about you start seeing things it's just the way it is sometimes it doesn't work but in most cases eventually it starts working but then uh, yeah, and also one thing that I didn't mention about photographing for others, that also helps with the gear acquisition syndrome. If you photograph for yourself, you most likely will avoid gas. Because then you are so confident that this stuff is good for me and I don't need this and that, even though some people say that you get better photographs if you, if you have this and that. Like many have said that to me when I said that I only have you know, 20 millimeter and OM5 on my trips, and they say that you will miss a lot of shots, you need this and that. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I do miss, but if I concentrate on the images that I can make with the limited gear, then I will make those images and I will start seeing things that are photographable with that gear. I don't see things that I would need a longer lens and it would probably just more distract me. If, if I had a lot of gear, then, you know, think about this and that. And yeah, yeah, of course, sometimes a zoom could be good. But anyways, and that also will um, make your uh, photography better if, if you limit yourself. Like many times I've said, if I wasn't a professional photographer, I probably had a one camera and one lens. That's only that I need, to be honest, for my 
personal work because I don't care what others say. And another thing to avoid cliches is to develop your own style. The style is a really hard way to explain what it is. It is, it could be your way of making the composition, you're making the subject matter, it could be anything. It's, it's really hard. This is something that I will make a video about and, and you know, discuss and think what uh, your own style might be or could be. Making images of cliches is not a shame. Just do it. But if you want to evolve and make images and that resonates with others, start thinking how you can get over those cliches. And even though if you photograph a sunset, what could you add to make it not so cliche, the photograph, to make it yours and make it unique? It's not easy, but that's the beauty of photography, that it's not easy. You learn all the time. You yeah. learn whole your life. The, every time you photograph, you learn something new. But these are the things that I will make photogra photographs, videos in the future, because that interests me. And I hope it interests you too. And here are some more videos about inspiration and how to get motivated if you're in a creative rut. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.